Hey, shalom everyone and welcome once again to Just a Word. This is Chazak Aliyahu Yasharal here. And, and today we are going to look at the first in our series looking at Hebrew Israelite errors. And uh, first of all, let me make a disclaimer here. I'm not here picking a fight with anyone or any organization, just pointing out errors, simply that, just pointing out errors of um, many of these organizations. And um, the first one we are going to be looking at is the error of baptism. Is water baptism necessary? Because I know many of these organizations teach that baptism is the word. And we don't need to be baptized. So we are going to look at that today. And I pray that you stay with us to the very end to see what we have to say. Because as the Apostle Shaul says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So I pray you stay until the end, until we prove all things. All right. So the first thing we have to look at is that we obey first and understand later. One thing that most of us are guilty of, and a lot of us do not recognize it, is trying to understand the scripture before we obey. Instead of obeying first and let the Holy Spirit lead us into an understanding, teach us what we need to understand after. Because that is how the Most High works. It is faith, belief. You believe first and then he gives you the understanding. And so as he says in Deuteronomy 30 verse 1, And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither Yahuwah thy Aluahim hath driven thee. So we see this verse is referring to us who are have been driven into captivity in these last days. And what does it say? And shall return unto Yahuwah thy Aluah, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So when we return to him, the call is to obey. The call is not to understand. The call is to obey. And as he said in Psalm 111 verse 10, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So it's doing his commandments first and then the understanding comes. A lot of us act as if we are so smart, we are so brilliant, we are so bright. We figure out things and then we decide when we want to obey. That is our problem. All right? And the prob that is our problem in, in how we approach scripture as well. Because a lot of people pick out their conclusion and then they pick out scripture to match up to their conclusion. But how we should understand scripture is to let the scriptures lead us to a conclusion. It's the same thing. We obey first and then we get the understanding. So, to the law and to the testimony, baptism, we are going to be looking at today. The error of the Hebrew Israelites in baptism and we are going to be looking at we are going to be looking at baptism from the law. Isaiah 8.20, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So, no light in us if we do not speak according to the law and to the testimony. So when we approach baptism, like everything else, it has to be based on Torah and the prophets. Okay? All right. But first, let us look at the meaning of baptism. Baptism comes from the Greek baptizo, and the word, of course, is only in the New Testament Greek. It's there in the Old Testament, which we are going to see, but um, we will see. So, baptizo from a derivative of G911 to make whelmed that is fully wet. Fully wet. Now, when I'm giving the um, interpretations of this, the meaning of this word, just bear in mind what the Hebrew Israelites say, baptism is the word, and see if you can match up the word with what I'm saying here. So to make whelmed that is fully wet. 
used only in the New Testament of ceremonial ablution. Very important word there. Ceremonial ablution. Especially technically to the ordinance of Christian baptism. Of course, Chong's had to put in something there for the Christians. Baptized, Baptist, Baptist, baptize, wash. So baptism has to do with water, wash, fully wet, ablution. Now let us look at the meaning of ablution. Ablution is a noun, which means an act of washing oneself. Get away from here. An act of washing oneself, which has to do with water. If you look at similar words, we see washing, cleansing, bathing, showering, scrubbing, purification. All these have to do with water. Another meaning, a ceremonial act of washing parts of the body or sacred containers. So baptism has to do with washing. It has to do with water, water, water. No space here for the word. All right? No space here for the word. So, let's find baptism in Torah. Because it says to the law and to the prophets, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And because we believe there is light in us, we have to speak according to Torah. So, let's look at baptism in Torah. And this is the mistake, the error that we make as well. Not understanding where baptism originates. So because we don't understand where it originates and what it means, and it's right there before us, this phone, let me turn off this phone. Yeah. So because we don't understand it and where it is coming from, or we don't take the time because it's right before us, then we condemn it, not understanding what it is about. All right? So let's look at baptism in Torah. Where are we? Oh, let me see. Let me get this. Okay. So here we are in the Torah looking at baptism. And for that, we go to, let's go, Baikra 14, um, what is it? Verse 8. Baikra, or Leviticus 14, verse 8. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and wash himself in water, that he may be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. This is the baptism in Torah. Baptism is the ceremonial cleansing that you do once and for all because we're in the New Testament. Let's go. Let's look at it. And he that is to be cleansed, we're going to look at a few words here. We're going to look at this shall wash because there are two wash here. Two washes here. There's one wash here, 87364, and there's another wash up here, 83526. You're going to see the difference between them. Okay? So, H2891. No, H2891 is what we're going to look at. Where is it? 2891. To be cleansed. Okay. No, that's not the one that we want. Let me put that there. All right. So, this H2... What number is this? This is to wash. And this is the first wash here. It is kabas, which means to wash by treading, be washed, perform the work of a fuller, um, to wash garments, to be washed, to be washed out. All right? Properly by stamping with the feet. That is kabas. That is the clothes, the washing for the clothes. But there's another wash. That we have to look at. And this is 87364. That is Rahas. Rahas. And it means to wash off. To wash away. To bathe. To wash off. Wash away. Bathe. Alright. A primitive root to live or to wash the whole or a part of a thing. To bathe self. To wash self. This is what baptism is in the new covenant, it is the bathing, the washing of the um, skin to be clean. 
And if we look at the word, he shall be cleansed here. Where is it? That he may be clean. Yes, H2891. All right, that is ta Tahir, to be clean. So the baptism is to wash oneself to be clean. And let's see what it means to be clean. To be clean, be pure. To be clean physically of disease, to be clean ceremonially. To purify, be clean morally, made clean. So when they, in the Old Testament, they cleansed themselves in this way, they were made morally clean ceremonially clean it's the same thing for us with baptism what baptism is it is this cleansing once and for all once and for all and let's look at a couple more places in the torah where we see the similitude of baptism because remember the torah is a shadow of things to come but not the very image of the things, according to the Apostle Shaul. So, we have to look for the shadow in Torah, and this is the shadow. Leviticus 15.5 And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. Numbers 19.7 Bebit Bar 19.7 Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until... The even, this is the ceremonial washing to be clean. This is the equivalent of baptism. And so that is why the Messiah said in Matityahu 55, 17 to 18, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. So when the Messiah baptized, he came to fulfill the Torah. Yeah? He came with baptism. It is that cleansing that they did in the Old Testament. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. But what did he come to do? He came to magnify the law. Isaiah 42, 21, Yahuwah is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. That means the law is expanded. The, world, the law is made more honorable. So instead of every single act, you will have to um, make a ceremonial ablution. You will have to wash your clothes in and, and, and wash, bathe yourself in water and be unclean until the even. No, one baptism covers all just as the one offering of the Messiah covers all. That's simply what it is about. Okay? All right. So, baptism in water. Torah magnified in the New Testament. Masim 8.35 to 39. Acts 8, 35 to 39. The similitude. Acts 8, 35 to 39. And we know the story of the Ethiopian eunuch when Philip met, met the eunuch along the way and the eunuch could not understand the scripture and Philip, Philip opened his mouth and explained the scripture. Acts 835. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and pre preached unto him Yahusha. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So we see the necessary component of baptism. See, here is water. Not the word here. Water. Literal water. And I heard someone was telling me that they're saying that this water was, was people or something like that. I, the, the things that you uh, people invent in order to reach to their conclusion. All right? You use scripture for scripture to lead you to the truth. As long as you have a false conclusion, you are going to come up with foolishness to reach there. I'm telling you that. All right? So see, here is water. 
And if we go here and look at the meaning of water here. See here a certain water, G5204. Um, G5204, that is hudatos, which means water, as if rainy, literally or figuratively, water. It was water. It could not be figuratively, because as we continue, we shall see. It is literal water. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahushua HaMashiach is the son of Alua. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water. Both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Of course, the name baptism as, uh, uh, as well tells you about water, because baptized means fully wet, whelmed in water. And when it, they were come up out of the water, literal water, the spirit of Yahuwah caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way, rejoicing. All right? That is baptism for you. Literal water. That is ablution. Okay? So, one baptism. The Apostle Shaul said, There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One master, one faith, one baptism, one Alua and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And this was what I was saying earlier. That the law has now been magnified. And so baptism is now once and for all. Once and for all. No more ceremonial ablution whenever you transgress. Once and for all. Because we now have our intercessor at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. We have our lawyer, Yahushua Mashiach. Because just as, as one baptism, his one offering now perfects us. That's it. So we have one faith, one baptism. And that one baptism there could not be the word. Because there are many words. And we continually read the word and we continually grow in the word and learn the word. It's one baptism, one literal baptism because baptism has to do with water. Come on, people. All right. So, the Messiah even told us that baptism was needed to fulfill all righteousness. When he went to um, Yaukanan the Immerser, John the Baptist, here is the conversation. Then cometh Yahusha from Galilee to Jordan unto Yahukanan to be baptized of him. But Yahukanan forbade him, forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yahusha answering said unto him, Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. The Messiah says, We need baptism to fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness. Come on, people. And what happened to the Messiah when he was baptized? Verse 16. And Yahusha, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the spirit of Alua descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When did that voice come? That voice came after his baptism. Great things happen after your baptism spiritually. Baptism is spiritual, but the carnal man cannot understand it. Operations take place in the spiritual realm at baptism and during baptism. All right. So what else have we here? Mark 16, 15 to 16. Let's see what Messiah said here. Messiah said some very, something very important here. Mark 16, 15 to 16. Now let's see what he said. Before he left 
he said to the disciples, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the good news to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Come on, people. He was speaking about water baptism. There's no other baptism except water baptism. Baptized means, well, in water. He that believeth not shall be damned. He did not say he that believeth not and is not baptized. He doesn't need to say that because if you understand what believe means, this word has been tricking Christians and tricking a lot of people. When it says it believe, you believe, it means that you are willing to do what it takes to show your belief. So for example, if you say you believe in the Messiah, you will have to follow the Messiah to say you believe in him. You cannot just believe in your mind. So faith is an action word. It is a doing word. Belief is a doing word. So if you do not believe and um, be baptized, it means you do not believe. Let me say it again. If you are not baptized, it shows that you do not believe. That's what it's saying here. Okay? So, let us continue. Alright, so, we are looking at baptism. We are looking at the Hebrew Israelite error of water baptism. Refusing to be baptized in water. And I'm going to be honest with you, it shows the lack of the rock. Because... It shows in a lot of the doctrines that they cannot understand and it shows in their behavior. Not trying to be condescending or act all righteous, but something in your spirit says that something is wrong. When you watch these videos with these people, the aggression, the, uh, it, it's, it's like thugs. That's not what the Ruach should do. The Ruach should humble you. The Ruach, the pride that is shown, etc. It's, it's not... It's not scriptural. You do not see that in the scripture. And as someone who is walking in the way, it would be the last thing, some of the things that these people say and do would be the last thing that I want to do. My conscience would kill me if I would do so. Yes? Because the Ruach is not there. I'm telling you, it's not there. Because you refuse to do what it takes to fulfill all righteousness. This year makes it worse. Baptism and being born again. John 3, 5 to 6. Alright? This is another thing. You must be born again. Let's go there. Yahusha answered. This was a conversation between Yahusha and Nicodemus. Yahusha answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Alua. Now this is why a teaching like this is so important. Unless a man be born of what? Water. Water. Hudatos. Same Hudatos. Water. So unless you are born of water and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of Alua. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. What you must understand that by nature, all of us normally are in the flesh. But we have to be born again of the spirit. And there is the operation that takes place that we some things that we just have to do in order for us to be born of the spirit. We just cannot get up and read the word and be born of the spirit. All right? And let's see the instruction that was given to us for us to be born of the Spirit. We're going to look at water and the Spirit. Being born of the water and the Spirit. And let's go to Massim again. Acts 2, 38 to 39. Then Kepha said unto them, Repent! And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the instruction that has been given to us for us to be born again of the Spirit. 
Let's look. Kepha or Peter said, Repent. Baptism and repentance go hand in hand. Repent and be baptized. Repent and be fully whelmed in water. This is where we come to water. In the name of Yahushua Mashiach, our sins will be remitted and we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is water, baptism, and the Spirit being born of water and the Spirit. Let's look back at it. Unless a man be what? Born of water, be baptized in the water and of the Spirit, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Alua. So this is telling all you Hebrew Israelites who are saying that the, the word is baptism. This is saying that you cannot enter into the kingdom because you have not been born of water and the Spirit. This is really serious. And if we go back to Acts 2.38, Kepha said something after that. He said, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as Yahuwah or Aluah shall call. So whatever promise is here for us, we cannot access it unless we do this. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now what promise was Kepha talking about? Yechezkel or Ezekiel 11, 19 to 20. 11, 19 to 20. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them an heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Aluah him. This is the promise when he gathers us. Therefore, thus said, therefore say, thus said Yahuwah Aluah him, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. So, in giving us the land of Israel, he will also give us one heart. And this is another misunderstanding that Hebrew Israelites have that we are not in the new covenant. I hopefully, Yahuwah willing, that is the next video I should do. All right? They don't understand that we are in the new covenant, but we are not yet been brought into the bond of the covenant. We will be brought into the bond of the covenant when we are ready to enter into the land of Israel. But for now, we are in the covenant just as in Sinai. When they were in the covenant and they had to enter into the bond of the covenant before they entered into the land of Israel. That is another thing that I will have to look at. Okay? But... This is a promise, a new heart. And how do we get the new heart and the new spirit? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, for the remissions of sin, remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, now you are able to walk in His statutes and keep it or His ordinances and do them. Okay? Come on, people. Romans 6, 3 to 11. Trying to go as fast as possible. All right. More to it and more can be expounded, but Romans 6, don't want to make this video long. 3 to 11. Okay. Baptized into his death. Remember, it says in John 3 that you must be born again. And you must be born of water and the Spirit. But how can you be born unless you die? You cannot be born unless you die. And that is what baptism is. Baptism is death and resurrection. Death and resurrection spiritually. That's a spiritual operation that takes place when we are baptized. When you repent, you cleanse your, yourself. Then when you go under, that is the old person being buried. And spiritually, the Father forgives your sin. The, your sins are remitted when you go under spiritually and are buried and when you rise you rise in newness of life a new man if you allow yourself to become a new man because of course you can be baptized and then you go after your own heart and you quench the spirit etc and you are just the same as before but you are now able through the gift of the holy spirit if you use that gift you are now able to rise in newness and to now walk in the spirit. Romans 6 verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahushua Mashiach were baptized into his death? 
That is it. We die with him and we rise in newness. We are born again, people. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Mashiach was raised up from the dead by the esteem of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Born again, people. Newness of life. Born again of water and the Spirit. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Born again. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The body of sin is destroyed, has been impaled with him. Going under the water, we die with him, born again. For he that is dead is freed from sin. For if we be dead with Mashiach, we believe that we shall also live with him. Born again, knowing that Mashiach being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto Allah. So just as he died once, we go and we die that death once in baptism. One baptism, that's why we don't need any more ceremonial ablution. One baptism, die once. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto Alua through Yahusha Mashiach our Master. Alright? So, dead to sin through baptism. Born again. Resurrected as our Mashiach was resurrected. Okay? And as a result of that, baptism now saves you. Let's go. First Peter 3. 20 to 22. First Peter 3, 20 to 22. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of Alua waited in the days of Noah. This was speaking about the people in the days of Noah. While the ark was a preparing, wherein few that his eight souls were saved by water. He's giving a similitude between the saving of Noah by what? By water. It was the same similitude that the Apostle Shaul was making when he said, um, when they went through the Red Sea, that they were baptized through the Red Sea. He's using the similitude with baptism to say that baptism is, is, has a similitude in the Old Testament. So, Noah, they were saved by water. No, he's saying that the like figure we are unto, even baptism, doth also now save us. So just as our Noah was saved by water and his family were saved by water, it's the same way baptism also saves us. But he says, very important, he's telling us now that it is not as it was in the old testament when you had to wash your clothes and it was clean and wash your skin at it and it is clean. But now, it is a spiritual operation. Let's see this. Let's see 21. The like figure we are unto, even baptism, doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward Allah by the resurrection of Yahushua Mashiach. So just as we read before, that through the resurrection of Yahushua Mashiach, we die and we are resurrected and we rise with him. It is the same way with baptism. With baptism, when we rise, we have answer. We have the answer of a good conscience. And that good conscience, of course, is given to us by the gift of the Holy Spirit that we receive receive when we baptize come on people that is what saves us all right who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of Allah? angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him that's yahushua mashiach so that's what baptism does gives us a good conscience because we have received the gift of the holy spirit hey let's go and to show the importance of baptism, if we are not properly baptized, we have to baptize. Again, and this is for those people who are baptized in the name, the false name of JC and other names 
That may be false. If you have baptized in a false name, you have to rebaptize. If you are not baptized properly, you have to be baptized. All right? Now let's read it. We're going to go from verse 1 to 7. Acts 19.1 And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And we know John's baptism was a ba baptism of repentance. You repent and you were baptized. All right? But they did not baptize under John's baptism. They did not baptize in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. That's the difference. And that is what gives you the Holy Spirit. Go to Acts 2.38. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is through the Messiah, the name of the Messiah, you receive the Holy Spirit. So you cannot be baptized in the name of J.C. and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right? It's just not scriptural. Then said Shaul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Mashiach Yahusha. So John would say, you should believe, repent, and believe on him that is to come. Okay? But, hear this, hear this. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Master Yahusha. We have to be baptized in the name of the Master Yahusha. And baptized again means fully wet. And when Shaul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And the men were about twelve. All right? So even when they baptized with the wrong baptism, they had to be baptized again. And it says when they heard this, when they, heard this they were baptized in the name of the Master, Yahusha. And of course, going back again to the meaning of the word um, baptized. It's baptizo, to make whelmed, that is fully wet. All right? Water. There is no space for any word here. All right? And there is an article. We did an article on justaword.org that dealt with all the, with the claims of the Hebrew Israelites, uh, were IUIC, of it being, of baptism being the word. And it, it is so easy to debunk because all of their claims were false. All right, they were even claiming one of them that Shaul never baptized because Shaul said, I did not come to baptize. And they, 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 they um, ignored a few verses down where he says, I did baptize, I think, Gaius or something like that. So they have left out the words in order to baptize. So what they do, they pick out what suits their teaching and do not go into the word. To really prove the truth. Because this is how you prove truth. If you have conflicts in the scripture, that is good. Because when you use precept upon precept, it will show what it means. So what Shaul, was actually, me what actual Shaul actually meant was that he, baptism was not his primary thing. His thing was to go and um, establish the assemblies. And so other people could baptize. That's what he was saying. All right, he was not saying that we should not baptize and nobody must get baptized. Come on, people. Anyway, the, that article on Just a Word really gets into it and it de delves into uh, an IUIC video and um, kind of debunks all of that thing that they had. All right, so as we said, as I said before, this is a series in which I'll be looking at um, Hebrew Israelite um, errors and. Um, yeah, to show the errors because there are a whole lot of errors and uh, this, these errors are leading people astray, people. They are leading people astray. And these are the end times. We are in the time of the end and we have to get it right. All right? It's no time now for name calling or for attacks or for um, battles. or for, It's the time for the truth. So what I'm giving here is for you to prove all things, to go and take your scriptures and look into it. That's what I'm doing. I'm not here to battle or to debate. Or, I'm not into that. All right? 
I've watched your videos over and over and I've seen the errors, so I put out the errors. All right? We are here to learn from each other. None of us knows it all, especially those organizations that are neo Christian organizations, church like organizations. They are churches. IUIC in Christ. How can you be using the name Christ? How can you be using that name? You know that the name is false and you're still using it. All right, those things are what I'm talking about. That's religion. All right, you have to be followers of the way. That means you hold on to nothing because you learn and you shed as you go along. As the Apostle Shaul said, we, we do not claim to att have attained, but this thing I do, forgetting everything that is behind, I press toward the mark of a high calling, which is in Messiah, Yahusha. So it's always a press on and to get rid of the things that are behind. All right? So baptism we looked at today, you had better get baptized. If you are not baptized, please get yourself baptized in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And trust me, Believe me, when your life will not be the same because your hearts and your minds will be transformed. All right? And you will have the Ruach of Messiah. And as the Apostle Shaul said, if any man hath not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. And what did the Messiah say? Many will come unto me and say, Master, Master, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do wonderful works in your name? And then will I say unto you, Depart from me, ye workers of lawlessness. We don't want to be called that. We want to fulfill all righteousness. And baptism is needed to fulfill all righteousness. All right? Shalom. So this is Chazak Eliyahu Yasharal here from Just a Word. Thank you for watching. All right? Until next time, Shalom. <laughs>